Today we're going to be looking at the Sandy Kit battery replacement set that you can get off Amazon for $25. Now overall I would 100% recommend this kit if it's something that you are interested in doing yourself. With that said, uh, it is a slightly more difficult task than you would initially expect. And so if this isn't something that interests you or it's not something that uh, you find fascinating, I probably wouldn't recommend you to do it yourself just for the sake of you know not wanting to break or mess something up and have to pay an even larger amount or, or really just be left with a, a phone that doesn't work. So you know overall you're saving yourself $25 because the kit does cost $25 and it, it costs $50 to have Apple actually fix it for you. So again, you know it's not entirely difficult. you just got to take your time and be patient. Uh, I think overall this would it took me an hour um, and 15 minutes to complete and you know I, I was taking my time I wasn't rushing and I was fumbling here and there so it's really not not impossible and so like again you know just you gotta think about it um, and see if it's right for you uh, now taking now, a look at the actual kit you can see earlier we saw a couple of adhesives that's actually to glue the screen to the actual case itself and then those pink adhesives were to glue the um, actual battery to the uh, inside the case so it doesn't move around. One of the things I really like about this kit is all the tips of the screw removal tools is magnetic so that makes it the job a lot more easier. In addition the kit comes with two battery adhesives and two adhesives to connect the LCD screen to the case which I think is a really nice inclusion. Now moving on to the teardown you're going to have to use a Penelope screwdriver to get the two screws on the bottom of the phone out. This is a good time to get a saucer or a few saucers really to place all the screws. Even though the screws look very similar in size and length, they do vary. So try to put them exactly back where they came out from. Next, you're going to be using your blow dryer to heat up the phone and then use the tweezers and the suction cup to get in between the phone and kind of pry it open. Now, I do want to stress, you really have to heat up the phone a lot. It makes a world of difference in making it easier to open up the phone. I actually had to go back, heat up the phone a second time before I was able to get it open. Now, once you do get it open, you can take your plastic um, pry tool and go ahead and put it in and just move it along back and forth. You're going to feel the glue, um, you know, kind of tearing. So I like to start off on the left side. Um, when you're facing the phone and then move to the right. Uh, once you go up high enough, um, you can go ahead, put your phone down and start blow drying the top of the phone again, just to heat it up. Um, because by, by the time you get there, it's, it's gonna be cool. Um, it takes a little bit longer than it looks in the video. Once you heat up the phone enough, you're gonna wanna pull the screen down slightly and that way it'll create a gap and you can stick your tool inside and cut the glue. Now, some glue is gonna remain. Be careful though when you're opening it. Don't pull too hard because you could actually be putting pressure on the ribbons and not the glue itself. If you're not sure, just try and use your other hand to kind of peel some of the glue off um, while you're hold, holding the screen open. And that way you'll know whether it's the actual ribbon that you're putting um, pressure on or if it's the uh, from the glue itself. Now, you're gonna notice my phone is not really opening flat. That's because you actually have to raise the screen slightly and rest it on the case itself as opposed to lying it right beside it. And that's the secret to having it lie open like a book. Next we're going to go ahead and remove the four screws that hold down three ribbons, one that connects to the battery and two that go to the display. Now I do want to emphasize how much downward pressure you're going to have to put to twist these off. It's more than you think. It's not an incredible amount, but you know, uh, at first I couldn't get a grip. It was just because I wasn't pressing down hard enough. So once you go ahead and do that, you can remove the uh, top panel and then go ahead and pry the battery uh, connector out. So you can just go ahead, take the tool and just kind of pop it off. It's really easy. It doesn't need a lot of force. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the two screws that hold the ribbon that connects to the speaker. So the first one is pretty easy, but the second one, you kind of have to work in between the ribbon and the display itself 
to get a good angle. You can go ahead and pop off the top panel and then you can work your way on removing the ribbons. Now you can really go in any order you want. It's actually really easy to pop them off. Just get underneath it and give it a gentle push and then you can see it just kind of like comes out on its own. It kind of pops out. Once you get them out, put the LCD screen to the side. You don't need it for a little while. Now we're going to go ahead and work on moving the Taptic motor at the bottom. Now some people prefer not to remove it and save themselves the time. I wanted the extra room so I went for it. Again, it's it's personal preference. Uh, it's you know it, it is better to touch less things in the device itself. But you know for something like this, I didn't want to be pulling the tabs and hit something that I shouldn't. So I went ahead and removed it. So it's a total of three screws for the motor itself, and then you'll see that there's a plastic piece on the right side, and for that there are two screws holding it in. Now that plastic piece is holding the actual ribbon connecting the Taptic motor to the case. So once you go ahead and remove that, you can pop up the plastic piece. It's really easy to come out. Um, and then you can go ahead and work on popping the ribbon uh, connection. And then you can go ahead and take the motor, place it to the side, um, and you know don't worry about it until it's time to uh, place it back in. Now it's time to work on getting the actual battery out of the case. So you're gonna wanna scrape off the adhesive that's attached to the battery and then slowly try and pull the adhesive away. So I can't stress this enough. You really do have to go slowly. If you go too quickly, it's just gonna break off. And you know, it's, it seems painful and I know you wanna just yank it, but really just take your time and pull nice and slowly and you're gonna end up having the battery pop off. And once you do, you know that, you know, you got all the adhes adhesive from underneath the battery removed. So once that pops off, you can just take the battery, place it to the side. You no longer need that anymore. New now you can put the new adhesive on the new battery. So just peel off the top layer and really just place it down. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to leave a little bit at the edge just so that you can fold it back up top onto the battery, similar to how it was before. And if it's not 100% lined up, it really doesn't matter. You know, you, you it's it's not going to cause a problem for anyone, and nobody's going to be looking at it. So go ahead, peel those tabs over the battery, and drop it into place. You only have one shot, but it's really, again, not too big of a deal. Go ahead and start cleaning the edges around the case, and then drop the actual adhesive uh, on. So it don't worry too much if you, if um, uh, if you're worried about dropping it in early, there's another layer on top that you'll see, uh, which is really nice because you know you can keep working and not worry about anything sticking. And on top of it, you can place the ribbons in to the phone, similar to how I'm doing now, and then you can still peel the um, adhesive off, the, the top layer off, because it's actually split into two. So you can peel one side off and then peel the other side off, and it won't you know come into uh, make any any issues. So go ahead, start putting everything in, start with your Taptic motor, and then you can go ahead and work on the other panels. Um, now you're gonna notice I had a problem with the speaker panel, um, the screw that was all the way on the inside. You, you can kind of see the weird angle I'm going at it now. Um, it helped a lot and it made it a lot easier. And then you're really honestly just ready to go ahead and place your LCD screen in. So angle it in a way so that way the top part can slide into the case. And once it slides in, you can go ahead and click everything down. And you're gonna just, you know, gently press it down. So you'll notice my screen is kind of popping out still. So you're gonna press up and down a little bit. And on top of it, I think placing the adhesive on the actual case itself wasn't the best idea. It may have been better to place it on the LCD screen first. So that way it doesn't get caught on the, um, on the pins when it's going into the case. But nonetheless, it ended up working out perfectly fine. And I was able to close my phone, screw on the screws on the bottom, and then go ahead and turn my phone on.